Hey what's up guys it's Oakley and as most of you know CA just released the in-engine trailer for Total War Warhammer and they said explicitly up front in big letters this is in-engine and what CA did with that is they explained on their forums is that from here on out what they're going to be doing is clearly labeling videos. They say you know moving forward as a policy videos are going to be clearly labeled they're going to follow you know they're basically what they're doing is they're trying to avert the PR crisis that was the um, Siege of Carthage demo where a lot of people took that to be gameplay and that's kind of what they imply that oh this is only early alpha it can only get better there was a huge backlash over that a lot of developers have been putting you know fine text this is you know in engine as opposed to actual gameplay but no CA has taken the initiative on this front they've gone ahead and on their website delineated exactly what constitutes each of these sort of different titles and they're going to stick that in their video titles so that they can be you know as forward as this and I think this is a great turn of events that de definitely shows progress and foresight something a lot of developers I think should follow so I'm really glad to see see a turn a new leaf on that front and I hope to see this type of um, you know consumer first type of attitude moving forward it's definitely very very refreshing especially with the launch of a new series Anyways, getting into the trailer, I'm going to be stopping and starting this on and off again, so go ahead and watch the full trailer. I'll link that below. We're going to be tearing this apart, you know, frame by frame, pretty much. So here at the very beginning, we do see a map of the old world. This is going to be a three-part game. The first one is going to focus on the first, first four factions that I listed here. The Empire in red, then your vampire counts are in purple, uh, brown, or, you know, in the mountains is going to be the dwarves, and then green is the greenskins. Um, this is not confirmed by CA where they are, but I kind of roughly overlaid it with the previous map. I have a whole, you know, geopolitics video. Check that out um, so you can reference it. So it seems like they've tweaked the map somewhat, but I was still able to guess where they were. Yellow is going to be the border princes. That's actually been confirmed to be in the game. Then Athalorn in, uh, in green is going to be the wood elves, and then Bretonia in blue. Now, these have not necessarily been called out directly they do however border the map here uh as same with Estalia and Tele on the southwest I think those will mostly come up in next iteration no sign of Kislev however look on the far north where you would expect Kislev to make uh, an appearance I don't quite see them although maybe they could be taking a chunk out of the empire we don't really know mostly it looks like that's going to be the wastelands to the north so you know, this is what I expect. Probably the first game is going to be the eastern part of this map. I'm guessing they will pretty much ignore Bretonia and the Wood Elves. Probably Kislev. I, I thought it was going to be in the game. Judging by this map, it doesn't quite seem like Kislev has room. But maybe, you know, further north, that isn't quite, you know, the wastelands. And there still is room for some nations in there. Uh, anyways, Chaos is not necessarily confirmed as being playable. But you can bet your ass they're going to be in the game. I mean, it's, yeah, the, Chaos is definitely going to be in the game. And here we see even it's part of the artwork. Uh, or uh, uh, Empire, um, you know, uh, warrior priest is fighting one of them. And then here you start to see some of the cool details of the, of the campaign map, I like the, the artwork and all that stuff, and they have a lot of lore to draw from. And they zoom in here towards the Empire as Carl Franz is talking about, you know, the fracture of the Empire. And this is going to be, again, confirmation that we're going to see Altdorf, which is um, one of the capitals of the Empire. It has the ability to switch between different positions depending on the policies, you know, but uh, at this certain point in time, it's going to be Altdorf, and this is an image I pulled off online, and you can see how it very much matches what we saw previously. This is going to be one of the you know various iterations of what the city is supposed to look like. I think it's cool with the canal. It looks very much like Rome on the Tiber. Um, but we have a whole, again, separate video discussing all this stuff. The video I will direct you to, if you haven't seen it already, is where we discuss cities and sieges, talking about the various cities in the Warhammer world to verse you on that. Um, but in any case, I just wanted to you know point out that, hey, look at this, Altdorf seems to be confirmed. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of other cities. Then it you know goes back into gameplay. I just wanted to show a little bit of the focus on the close details of Carl France, the boots. All of this looks really, really cool. I think the great artwork and the character models in this are definitely shining through. Uh, the attention to detail and the depth is clearly something that they wanted to get across. And they did say that they want to sort of weave the story, the lore of Warhammer into the game through the artwork. And this is clearly shown right here. You know, you can see Sigmar on there. Um, lots of cool details on... Um, Call friends here, and presumably, you know, all these pieces of equipment are pieces that you will have to unlock through doing quest chains in the game, so you can make Carl friends as bad as, as you'd like. Here I froze the frame just for us to take a look at the state troops right here, the or halberdier, sorry. Yeah, there is, there are kind of monotone, but that's kind of what they are in the tabletop game, but then there is some randomization 
in the helmets. You can see some of them don't have helmets, some of them do. Different small minute details in and amongst them. That's something we've come to expect from Total War Warhammer games, and I'm glad they're sticking to it still, you know, the variety and randomness within the units themselves. And then here, Call France in the game does sort of move in front of his troops and gives a general speech. Now, I think it was confirmed in an interview that Angry Joe did with um, people. Um, I think it was with Simon Mann that you know, general speeches are confirmed to make a return. Hopefully, it'll be something like this with the implementation of Lords and Heroes. I would be surprised if they didn't somehow weave that into the quest chains that your general would have very specific, you know, general speeches with regards to doing a particular quest, especially the Battle of Blackfire Pass, which is what we're seeing here. So I'm guessing, you know, they'll have those um, woven into the game. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing these types of general speeches come back, especially when it's not like, you know, uh, a human versus a human here you'll have the distinction of humans against you know calling out his enemy as goblins as orcs as whatever it is much more epic than you know humans ranting and raving about oh these pesky barbarians no these are going to be fucking pesky orcs orcs um speaking of orcs you get your first shot close up on these guys you can see again these guys just like the empire troops do have variations in the um the the armor the weapons the looks, the hair, all that stuff, obviously changing. And these guys definitely, you can see the, you know, they sculpted them to look very similar to what they look like on the tabletop. Much more, um, you know, brutish looking forces. And here you can see them charging forward in mass in groups. And just their different uh, physiology and structure makes them run very differently. And I'm going to pause the frame here so you can see these guys. Definitely the way they move forward is very distinct. Again, Warhammer paints that difference and with the different skeleton models that they have in the game do expect to see some differences in the way units behave and i think even the movement just goes to paint these various factions and races very differently um speaking of this i wanted to take a look at just look at the unit spacing for these forces i tried in this whole battle to try and get a glimpse of what unit formations are like from the empire it's more obvious from the orcs maybe not so much but it does seem like look as at these as these guys are charging forward very much in loose formation that is in keeping with how these guys play on the tabletop very much about swarm tactics so hopefully we'll see Orc units be very large, be very spaced out, um, sort of, you know, playing to the fact that they like to rush a lot. And then in the distance, you can see top right trolls and then top left were giants. Here we can see one of the Empire steam tanks already starting to fire. This guy looks glorious. That was his main cannon firing. And then there's a second cannon on top. I don't quite know what that does. I am not familiar with the lore. I'm not actually sure if it has like a, a flamethrower or if it's just a smaller little cannonball that you can do. Hopefully, you know, that's something that you could upgrade to have maybe close quarter combat capabilities. I'm also wondering if this thing has the speed to ram into units. Um, the Hellfire you know, missile bat or rapid fire battery right there, just bombarding the enemy forces. I'm looking forward to tearing into the orcs with the artillery pieces like that. And now take a look as the orcs start to get into combat. You can see a lot of them actually jumping into action. That is something that is not just scripted. It's something that was confirmed on the battlefield um, by people who saw the black battle of Blackfire pass. They over and over noted the fact that, you know, units bound and leap into combat. A couple things in the distance, look on the far back left, two steam tanks between them is going to be a lone sorcerer or a priest from the Empire side. So again, confirming that those warriors are, you know, a priest are sort of individual units. Well, maybe it's not a priest, but I'm guessing that's a priest. Um, as opposed to a group of spellcasters. On the top right, take a look at one of the Empire units. Holding what looks to be a banner. Is that banner a special type of unit that you can have that kind of improves morale? I'm not quite sure, but I just wanted to point out the little details there. And here you can see a very scripted animation. Just like CA was pointing out, this is all done in-engine, uh, pre-scripted. So, um, yes, some of these animations you're seeing here will be on the battlefield, but very many of them were customized. Now, here, as the Empire troops charge into battle, take a look on the left. Very orderly, spaced out. However, eh, look on the right, once they're in combat, we are starting to get a bit of the mosh pit. I mean, take a look at that whole uh, orc army that before was super stretched out. Look how compacted they are now. That has me worried that they haven't quite figured out the blobbing for this game. Uh, and I'm a little worried. I really hope we don't turn again into, you know, mosh pit type battles. Um, and that's kind of what I'm seeing from this uh, those screenshots. That has me a little worried. Demigriffs here charging out. And again, you can see the way they, they're animated, the way they pounce. Very much, um, you know, CA animators doing a great job to make these guys stand out and look very impressive and very much feel like they're, you know, a different type of unit as opposed to cavalry. Um, and here you do get to see one of the um, sorcerers in the battlefield. Again, once more, we don't see him surrounded by any attendants. 
makes it seem like spellcasters are going to be individual units by themselves here on the battlefield. Now, he does have a dagger, so they can fend themselves, fend for themselves in close quarter combat, but mostly what CA said is these guys are uh, susceptible to being swarmed and picked off, and you want to support them, but they do have the ability to have um, attacking, defending, buff, debuff spells, and as you're going to see here shortly, he's actually going to call in a ma massive spell. The way spells work in this game is you have a, a restricted mana pool that starts off kind of small at the beginning of battle and builds over time up to a cap every time you do a spell it takes a certain amount of um, mana for example the comet of cassandora uh, i said casanova last time apologies for that it's the comet of cassandora will take a huge chunk out of your mana pool and so you want to reserve that for you know high priority targets like a giant like this uh, if you do decide to go for a big mana discharge like that it's going to take a long while for you to recharge that um, and so maybe you don't want to use all your mana, as I said in a previous video. Maybe you want to go ahead and just do a lot of smaller mana spells and allow you, you know, you to continue to use magic over time, as opposed to wasting all of it potentially, you know, on a shot like this that might have missed. Maybe it doesn't even kill the giant. In this case, it looks like it did. And then here you see um, a little bit closer shot of the uh, priest, um, warrior priest, right here. I guess. I mean, I'm not sure this uh, sorcerer or a mage or something like that but again no attendance around him but i do really like the details even zoomed up the character models look absolutely glorious in this case he does have a sword now not the dagger we saw earlier so uh, actually this might even be a different model um, than the one we saw previously but this guy gets straight up just eaten up um and so i don't quite expect that <laughs> that looks very pre-rendered to me um but, uh, you know, what we do get to see, at least, despite the pre-rendering, you know, kill animation, that was sweet. You know, I don't expect to see that in the game, but I do expect to see this in the game. And this is presumably Grimgor Ironhide, one of the um, sort of big heroes and lords that you can have. Um, and just like Carl France has the ability to do quests and stuff to unlock his, his mount, at the same time, if you're the orcs, you can have Grimgor and he can unlock mounts. So expect to see orc type, you know, um, quests and abilities to unlock everything you see here on this, uh, you know, this um, orc general warlord. Definitely looking forward to playing that quest and seeing what the orc type, um, you know, missions are. Maybe it's like pillage or maybe you have like a wog as one of his end quests, just like burn down Middenheim or uh, Altdorf, something like that. I really want to see the end, you know, quest battles for that. Then you see these two characters engage. Again, CA has confirmed that you can have flying units go from, you know, flying up in the air to the ground. Now, they did also confirm that when they're in the air, they're going to be animations for them to fight in the air. They didn't say anything about them fighting on the ground. So it seems like here they were about to do it in the trailer and then it cuts off. So actually, I'm not quite sure if you can have arrow units land on the ground and then fight each other. But they did say that arrow units landing on the ground can fight other ground units. So, you know. Presumably, it means two aerial units on the ground can then fight each other. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's going to cut off right before we do that in a very cinematic um, manner as Deathclaw charges you in the face. So that's going to be it for the trailer. You know, we, even though it's in-engine, I think we got to discern a lot from this. And obviously, what they announce here at the end is, you know, at the end of the month, on the 30th, they're going to be showing us off actual gameplay from the Battle of Blackfire Pass, the developer walkthrough. So stay tuned for that. There'll be more certainly to come. See you next time.